Isaiah chapter 1, verse 16. We've looked at a condition of Israel, Judah, and we've seen with the church a person that is sickly, worse than the state of Job, of wounds that have not been taken care of, open, sore. Somebody you don't want to, would want around you. You imagine the smell of infection. In verse 16, wash you, make you clean. Cleansing. Washing is a very healthy thing. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. So this is not a, a cleansing of water and soap. This is a cleansing of getting rid of the garbage that's in your life. The sin. Repenting is not just saying, I'm sorry, and go about your life. Repenting is becoming clean and putting away and ceasing. That's repentance. Learn to do well. Huh? I guess it's not natural for us to do well. Human nature is not to do well. You've got to learn. You've got to study. You've got to want to do it. Learning involves... You can sit anybody in a desk. And if they don't want to learn, no matter how much money you put into it, no matter how much effort you put into it, no matter how much you teach, Learning is something that you gotta want to do. Seek judgment. And that seems you know, the biggest thing, you know, judge not least you be judged, you're judging others. Paul says we are to judge ourselves. You are to go to God and say, God, what is vile and disgusting in my life? What putrefying sores do I have? I have a disease called sin. Where is it in my body? What needs to be cut out? Relieve the oppressed. We're looking at a nation now. Judah was oppressing the people. Solomon oppressed the people. Putting them under pressure and problems and taxes and work. The Pharisees and the Sadducees had the people in Jesus' time under oppression with all the rules and regulation. And Jesus walks in and says, listen, all those that are heavy laden, come to me. I'll take that yoke they're putting on you. Judge the fatherless. And that, again, that is somebody who, who's, who's the husband, the, the father of the family has died. There is no work. And they're taking advantage of the case. The government is taking advantage. They are oppressing. Plead for the widow. That's for a woman who doesn't even have children. If 
She doesn't have a husband. And the case is, if she's a widow and have children, you're the, the law says you're the helper. The law says you you know you are treat them right. The law. Come now. Before you can go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. You've got to come now. Now this is God speaking. You have got to come to God. In your putrefying state called sin. In repentance, verse 16. And let us, us, that's God and the sinner, God is reaching out to that vile, wicked, disgusting, dying sinner. As leprosy, the man in the Old Testament would be outside the gates crying, Unclean! Unclean! And one of the ailments of diseases that Jesus reached out and touched were those that were not to be touched. Men that had leprosy. God reached out to those that could not have been reached. Now, can you imagine the turmoil in the temple as the business is going on? And here comes this guy. He comes up to the, to, the, to the entrance of the temple, and they say, What do you want? What do you got there? And the guy has shifted to Le Leviticus 13 and 14. He has brought the offering of a clean leopard. That has never happened in the pages of the Bible of the history of the Jewish nation that a leper has been cleansed. They had to go dust off those chapters, those scrolls. Because they had not been opened before. The cleansing coming by knowing God, Jesus Christ. If Jesus Christ was not God and just some teacher, then he was vile and he was wicked because he touched the lepers. He violated the law. And we see a man here that's likened to leprosy in chapter 1. We see the condition of the church is likened to leprosy. The state condition of Judah is like a man in leprosy. And the Bible says, wash you, repent, put away, cease, come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. What do you think those, those priests and Sadducees would have done in Jesus' time? And this vile, you know, the Bible says if you have a running issue, you're unclean. The woman that bled for 12 years was unclean. Now we don't know if she had a husband. If her husband slept with her, being upon that bed, the Bible says, he is unclean. Do you know what is unclean in America? Our health care system. Now you want me to say Obama. I'm not going to say it. Because that's not what's unclean. According to the law, if you go into a doctor's office and sit in a doctor's waiting room or a chair, 
And somebody has had an issue. Somebody has had a blood flow. Somebody has had a disease. And that chair is occupied by somebody else. You're unclean. How many times personally in my family have we gone to a doctor's office and come home and a couple days later got sick? How many of you know somebody who's gone to a hospital for one ailment, come home, and they got something else? Unclean. Which means you cannot go to another man for to be clean in the way of unrighteousness. I'm sorry. No other man can take care of you, for he be unclean himself. God reaches down to the vile sinner that we've already studied in Isaiah 1. And he says, don't go away. He says, come. Come over here. Unclean. Unclean. Come over here. Now you go into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Of all the people that were diseased, you find me one where Jesus said, go away. As in, I don't want to deal with you, I ain't going to take care of you. Listen, I know personally, unless you got insurance and got money, if you ain't got that, a doctor will tell you, go away. I don't care. God says, come now and let us, you and me, reason. Let's get reasonable here. Man, Isaiah 1 is going to be a long chapter to study. You ever hear somebody say God is mean and cruel? Why did he kill all those babies over there? And why did he kill with an earthquake and whirlwind and all the other kinds of things and fire and drought? And that same God they, they accuse of being so wicked has told a man that is vile, he says, Come and let's be reasonable. You know what happens when you are given an opportunity to deal with somebody with the Bible? Not, not getting saved yet, but if somebody will, if you can open a Bible and show them, first of all, they're coming to God. And with the Bible, us, God, you as a vessel, and the sinner are reasonable, are reasoning, you are showing him scripture, you are showing him the word of God of his condition, you are showing him the word of God of what he needs to do about his condition. You now are part of verse 18. God the Father, God the Doctor has the patient sitting there in his office and he says, you are a sinner. You're going to die and you're going to hell. And as he breaks out that, that, that prescription pad, and he is the right Jesus Christ today, you are the pen. That writes out Jesus Christ as the prescription by you showing him the scripture. You better not be writing anything else on that prescription, Dad. You better not write, just say this prayer. You better not write baptism. You better not write, do this. You better not write, do that. You better be in the hands of God writing Jesus Christ as the prescription for the sin condition and nothing else. There are people out there who got prescriptions. 
for salvation. And they got a stack of them. See, I do this. See, I do that. See, I got that prescription. See, I got that prescription. I did that. I walked the old lady across the road. I give my tithes. I've been baptized. I'm a member of this church. I see five four four. I talk to a man, and he, they just got piles of prescriptions, and none of them are the Lord Jesus Christ. That's not going to ail. That's not going to fix your ailment. That is not going to heal you. You do know when you come to Jesus Christ as as your offering to God for your sin, and based upon the faith that Jesus Christ will save you. You do know that you do not die ever again. Well, I know a Christian. Yeah, Paul says to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. You don't die. You just pass on. You just get in that elevator and press the H button. There you are with God. That's a remarkable God. And he don't plug his nose at your smell. And listen, there are some people, they can't help their smells because of what they've got. Now, they haven't taken a bath. Even that, God will say, come. The most vile, wickedest, smellest sinner, God says, come. Let us reason together. Saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. That's the word of God. Saith the Lord is the word of God. So when you go through the Romans road and you go through the Gospel of John and, and you go through verses in Revelation, you go through verses in Galatians, you are right there, saith the Lord. Because you're using what God said. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit, there you are. You are in verse 18, a vessel being used by God for a sinner who's vile and wicked. Though your sin. Now, you can't get sin out of the person. You don't go any further. Now, we had a guy last week. Oh, you know, he was, he was just mocking huh? Guys, you gotta be, you gotta know what they're doing. This guy was just mock. Yeah, I'm a sinner. Yeah, I know I'm a sinner. Do I get saved? Am I saved now? And that's mocking. That's the very first thing you've got. You got to get that guy to know is he's a sinner. You can't go no further. Though your sins be as scarlet, and that is bright red. In the Bible, scarlet, there are two threads that are scarlet. There was a baby that, that, that stuck out his hand in the birth canal. They put a scarlet thread around it. Rahab, the, the harlot in Jericho, put a, red, uh, put a scarlet thread on her, on her window for them to know where she was. The robe of Jesus was scarlet that the Romans gave him. The priest's clothes involved scarlet. And that beast, that woman that's on the beast of Revelation, Rome, is spoken of as scarlet. Fifty-two times, four times thirteen, scarlet shows up. A bright red. So you know what color sin is? It's red. You know what color advertising is? You know what the number one color of advertising? Neon signs, boxes, and I'll let you guess red. Scarlet. The red, white, and blue. Now Blood is red. It's the hemoglobin and iron protein that makes blood red. Do you imagine what the Lord Jesus Christ's blood was? Can you imagine how pure red, not scarlet, red 
his blood was. You are going to use a red to wash away a scarlet. And it says, they shall be white as snow. That's before the snow plows. That's before the sleds. That's before a little, little Fifi. Snow has very little impurities in it as it falls. It's, it's cleansed by the atmosphere. It's a pure white. And if the sun shines on it, it can be almost blinding. Though they be red like crimson, look at the reds in there. They shall be as wool, white, from sheep. You want to be a sheep. You want to be a cleansed sheep. And the only, only way a sheep can be clean, no sheep can clean himself. No sheep can go to another man to be clean. Only the shepherd can clean the sheep. So verse 18, and what we read so far, shows you man can't save you, only God can save you, and only the shepherd. So, it says, come let us reason together. Saith the Lord, capital L, capital R, capital D. So what does the Jehovah's Witness do when he runs to Peter and Peter says, our chief shepherd? And it says, they shall be white as wool. The only one that can make you clean is God, capital L, capital R, capital O, capital R, capital D. And it's the chief shepherd. Here's a condition. If ye, the sinner, be willing willing what do you do if your mama saved you? And you don't care about God and the word and church and anything like that. I guess you're not saved. Oh, I got saved because, you know, this girl, and we dated and all that. We, really? Were you willing for God, or were you willing to, to get what you couldn't from her, to be clean? See, salvation follows a self that you have to be willing not by force. That woman one time I was witness to her and she had a friend. Well, just say, how to make her say this prayer. And be, that's not willing. That's wrong. And O B D N. All right. I want to be saved. Really? Okay, great. Let's get in this water. All right, that's not what God said. That's not what God said. You want to be saved? You want to go to heaven? Yes, I do. All right, and we're going to vote for you and this member of this church. That's not what God said.
God didn't say that. God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what God said. That's obedience. So you get somebody who says, my mama saved me, my church saved me, or baptism saved me. They are not in compliance of Isaiah. Did you know if you have Isaiah and that's the only book you have, you can lead someone to the Lord Jesus Christ? Where's Jesus Christ? Go to chapter 53, you'll find Jesus Christ. You match John, uh, excuse me, Isaiah 53 and, and Isaiah chapter 1. And won't Paul use that for dealing with the Jews? Here, look, listen, look, 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 it says, God says, come, come, come. You can be white as snow. How would I do that? Since Paul didn't say have Romans or anything like that, he was, let me show you what the scroll of Isaiah 53. Well, that's the nation of Israel. No, 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 no. It says it's an individual. It's not people. It's a person. Okay. Ye shall eat the good of the land, and that's where you fall away from the church. That is not the church. That is the Jew of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the twelve tribes which God has promised them a land grant of Palestine. Which I am now recording in the Bible all the places. You won't believe all the places that it shows up that this land I give to you. This is the land of your inheritance. This is the land I'm going to give to your, your children. Now we as a Christian, as a body of Christ, we get a city. New Jerusalem. The Jews get the land. How do they get the land? By coming to God. By reason with God. Being a sinner and vile and wicked. And being willing. And obedient. Guess what happens to, to Judah later on? They're not in the land no longer. Three times Nebuchadnezzar comes into Judah and sacks the place. And the last time, man, he just destroys it. Guess what? They were not willing. They were not obedient. Up pops a man, Ezra and Nehemiah. Daniel's confessing his sins and confessing the sins of the nation. The people are finally willing to get right with God. And you have Ezra and Nehemiah, the recordings of them going back to Jerusalem. They are weeping. They are crying. They are getting rid of their sins. In one of the cases, they're getting rid of the of the uh, the wives that they weren't supposed to be married. Let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of those children. That's repentance. Get rid of the sin. Well, you know, we want to see a revival in America. Revival! Revival! And then December 1st, up goes the, the tree in the church. We're coming upon Easter. Up will be the, 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 the hitting eggs for the children to go find them at the church. Oh, forget that. What about all the churches are going to have, have for, what is it, tomorrow, I think it is. You know, they've had all these, uh, you know, mixed couples dancing and balls and, and uh, a husband and wife dinners. And, and there's one church I pass on the way to work. We're going to have a silent auction for, for, uh, uh, for a date. All in the name of sin, of course. See, you ain't going to get the revival because you're not willing. You want the revival, but you don't want to be obedient to God. You want to stay in your filthiness. You want to walk around in Christ 
as a zombie. And you are scaring the people away from Jesus Christ. Brains, give me brains. That's not, that's the old nature. Clean me up. Make me righteous. And the only righteousness there is, is Jesus Christ. So the nation of Israel, they were willing. They were obedient. And they got back into the land. And they blew it again. Ezra and Nehemiah shows you verse number 19. Daniel prayed. It's not recorded, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo prayed. Listen, you don't get by what they get by with God being with them in the fire if they didn't pray. But, here we go, if ye refuse, conditional, throw Calvin in the garbage can. Some people are predestined to go to hell. But if ye refuse, it says, verse 19, if, 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 Bruins, Calvinism, tulips. Cal, uh, if is a acid rain of Calvin's tulip. Because if is conditional. You can walk up to a woman and say, Dear, if you will set aside all men for me to be my wife, through sickness, through poor, through health, and through it all, if you will make that vow before God I will allow you to be my wife and she will turn to the man and say well if you know you provide and you put it with me and, and to death do us part I'll allow you to be my husband if now the woman or the man can say no sorry I don't want to put up with you. I want other women or I want other men. I want freedom. I whatever it is. That you can walk away. Imagine Calvinism to to the point that uh you know for marriage. And I know that there are places in the world that marriages are preset. But I wonder if there's a cause in there. They want the guy want no, that's I don't want her. Or the woman no. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. If you want to do right. If you want to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Jew, thou shalt go into the land if you were willing and obedient. For today, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. But if, conditional, ye refuse and rebel, I don't want Jesus. I don't want to do right. I don't want to listen to you, God. Ye shall be devoured with the sword. What's the Bible say the, the sword is? You don't know what the sword is? For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. There's a sword. There's Hebrew. What's that? 412? For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than two any edged sword. And then uh, Ephesians, the, the, the armor of God. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. How will you be devoured by the sword by the mouth of the Lord has spoken it? Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting... I forget how Jesus said that. 
The Lord did it with me. I never knew you. The Lord did I never knew you. It says devour. It doesn't say completely. In, in, I can never say that word, but completely made nothing. Like the Jehovah Witnesses say. In hell, you're being devoured. You're being eaten by the lake of fire. You're not consumed. Over and over and over and over, your body is suffering, being tormented. The word of God will say, go to hell. That is your choice. Or you can go into the land, or you can be saved, verse 19. And the land would be where we are today in the Old Testament reading. But today, as far as the period of time, you could be saved. There's no predestination as far as salvation. It's either you will or you will not. That's the cause. Now let's look at this. Let's look at verse, let's look this at again, verse 16 again. Let's look at salvation in the Old Testament. That's laid out for you. Wash you, make you clean. All right, that's by works. Not of works, least any man should boast. But you've got to step up to Jesus Christ and be willing to be clean. The washing of the word. you got to listen to the message. I sat in church one day, heard a message about, the, I don't even remember what the message was. Then I sat in the living room of my grandma's house, listened to a guy with an open Bible show how to be washed. I didn't wash myself, but I was willing to be washed. Put away the evil of your doings. Got rid of the sin. Repentance. Learn to do well. How did I learn to do well? Go to Bible, go to Sunday school, go to preaching, go to Sunday night service, go to midweek service, read my Bible, pray to God. Seek judgment. Lord, is there any unclean thing in me? And the answer is always, oh yeah, there is. Relieve the oppressed. Help others. Love thy neighbor. Love the brethren. Judge the fatherless. I don't know how you really get that in the church age, but plead with for the widow. You know someone who, who who is in the church who's not getting what they should be getting? Step up for them. Help them. Pray for them. Come now. Now. Now is the day of the salvation. James says your life is a vapor. You don't have tomorrow. Tomorrow's never here. And let us, God, reason together. Get with God. Not with religion. Not with science. And not with man. With God. Saith the Lord. Though your sins acknowledge you're a sinner. Be as scarlet. They shall be white as snow. I, I remember the day I first got saved. That that oh that that moment when I, I asked Christ to save me. That that pure clean moment. And it is. It's like the, the uh, 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 burdens and everything off your back just just went away. Like the sore arm I got. If God would just tomorrow morning wake up, wake me up and, and it'd be gone. I'd be like oh. It's gone. Be clean as snow. Snow is man, is God made. Someone said man made. Man makes his own snow. But that's not it. Only God can make true snow. Every year they try to make snow downtown. That's not real. God has his own secret formula and in his 52 ingredients, whatever he has for it, about snow. 
And snow has nitrogen in it. You know what nitrogen is good for? It's good for growing. You know where it's supposed to be? We're supposed to be fruitful. Though they be red like crimson, you know red's a stain you can't get out. Blood and red wine, I am told, is almost impossible to get out. You really got to do some cleaning, and you really got to put some money if, if you want to clean that right out. If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins. You know, God takes that red stain out and never be shown again. Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. You know that fine linen? It's the purest white. We're going to wear garments in New Jerusalem that are just going to sparkle. And there's no sun, S-U-N. They shall, uh, though they be red like crimson, that's a stain. And scarlet was a stain, it was a colored dye they used, and it was very expensive. They shall be white as wool. Become a lamb, become a sheep. And let your shepherd clean you. You know what happens when the shepherd comes up to the sheep and cleans? You're very close to him. And his own fingers are, are picking through your, your wool, whatever it's called. I don't know if it's called wool on the sheep. But he's, he, he's, he's there. He's picking the things off you. And as he's doing it, you can feel his, his fingers working on you. And when you're all clean, you can step back and look at your shepherd and say, It was all you that did it. Now, excuse me while I go get dirty again. That's a shame. If we be, if ye be willing, you gotta be willing and obedient. You gotta be obedient. You shall eat the good of the land. Now again, the land is the, is the, is the Old Testament Jew. For us, it's salvation and city, New Jerusalem. But if ye refuse and rebel, and many will, and many do. Ye shall be devoured with the sword, the word of God. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. God said it. And so guess what? It is so. When God says it, what are you going to do to change this? The Bible says, somewhere in the Bible says, how do you make straight what God has made crooked? Salvation is only by the way that God has planned to be for you to be saved. There are other ways of, but it's not salvation. It's damnation. You may think you're saved, but if you haven't come to God, if you haven't repented, you haven't been obedient and willing to what God has said, you're not saved. And God is calling out to you. God is reaching out to you, lost sinner. God is saying to you, come. Do you know what Islam says, Muslims? They don't say come, they say you must. Under a sword, and they kill you. That's not what's here. It may look like that, but that's not what it is. Christ has already shed blood for our sins. We are not to shed other people's blood. That in the Bible is called murder. And God, like I spoke with Calvin, who says, listen, he gives you two conditions. If you refuse or if you be willing, I'll come to you with a gospel and you, you've got a choice, yes or no. I'm not going to force you. 
I'm not going to put you under the death penalty to receive my God. That's not salvation. Now, you go run to the Islam and, and Muslims and say, well, there it says, with the sword. What did God bring into Judah? He brought a sword. The sword of Nebuchadnezzar. What did he bring in 70 AD? He brought a sword and weapons of Titus. I forget the year, but what did he do for the Jews when Adolf Hitler was in control? The 1900s. He brought a weapon. He brought a sword. He brought the the street the the uh, the burnings the the shootings uh, whatever they done to those Jews to kill them and torture them. Why did that happen to the Jews? Because you refused and rebelled. That's not given to a Christian. That's not given to a Gentile. We're not reading a Gentile book. So if you go chopping all people's heads with, with a sword in the name of religion, you are misapplying the scriptures. You have violated what God said. The subject is the Jews. I've been spiritualizing it for Christians. But the doctrinal, sound, historical fact is of Isaiah chapter 1. It's written to, let's see, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. You can't apply that today. It's outright murder. Now, I would be hated for what I just said. And my name will probably go in some file in Washington, D.C. And be, be broadcast all over the Middle East and all over the world. I don't care. It's the truth. Anybody who takes someone's life because they have not believed in God is a murderer. And they just left out... Totally left out verse 18. What Muslim is, is practicing what the Bible says? Where does it say, where does it say in Paul's writing, where does it say Jesus Christ says go and kill people? And yet the Roman Catholic Church has a complete history of killing Christians. Fox's Book of Martyrs. If you don't conform to our church, we'll take the sword, we'll chop off your head. Really? I guess you think you're Jews. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. I guess you're taking the Jewish promises out. You know, you're building a kingdom. I'm not building no kingdom. I'm going out and telling the people in all the world about Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. You don't want him? I'll tell someone else. They can force you to do nothing. It's the Holy Spirit that brings you. And the Holy Spirit does it by working with your heart, working with your conscience, working on who you are. God says, the God of the Bible says to you that are sinners, 
without hope, without God, God says, come. <laughs>